What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title that landed on my desk kind of came out of nowhere called White Sands. If I had to describe what White Sands was, it's effectively a much more in-depth version of Rebel Incorporated. So if you've never played Rebel Incorporated before, Rebel Incorporated is a game where you are a... I guess coalition government that's in a fictional Middle Eastern country that's trying to fight off an insurgency while at the same time winning the hearts and minds of all the local villages so that they don't join sides with the insurgency. And the game is actually really fun for a mobile game. I like it a lot. This game is like that, but with a lot more depth and a lot less explaining. White Sands is effectively a post-apocalyptic game with strategy on a grand overmap where there are crises that will come up in your territory, and you, being a remnant government like the Enclave that has come up out of a bunker after a hundred years ago, a solar flare wiped out humanity and mutated everybody into zombies and like wastelanders and things like that, you've come back up out of your Colorado bunker, with all of the materiel, all the vehicles, all the technology, all the bombs, all the resources you could ever need to reconquer effectively the United States and reestablish the government, I guess. That's the rough idea that I got. And so in this game, things are gonna happen on the map. You are going to have to respond to those things and knock them out. You are the Supreme Commander and you've gotta decide whether or not you wanna butcher everybody or whether you wanna be a nice guy. Um, whether or not you want to make the villages like you or bring them to heal. And the main way that you interact with just about everything in this game is through drone cameras, actually, which is pretty entertaining. And so that's what I was doing right here at the opening of the video, is we can actually go to the drone right here, and we can watch all of our vehicles going into combat and killing off, I don't know, zombies or something? Somebody is attacking this village because they're a bunch of douchebags, and this is my village. I don't like it when you attack it. There's other things we can do. We can call in, like, daisy cutters. Uh, we can call in a death laser from space that just, like, moves around and cuts a giant canyon in the earth. There's all kinds of fun things that you can do. Uh, I do have reservations about this game. I'll talk about them at the end of the video so that you can get it there. But for now, let's dive straight on in. And so what I'm doing right now is I have a couple of detachments and a couple of teams that are up to no good. Uh, so these guys are fighting over here. Why is that drone coming back? I clicked on return, didn't I? Send another drone over here, would you? We just send, like, another drone over to that side. I've also got another team down here that are going to collect some zombies from this area for samples so that we can figure out potentially if it's possible for us to, like, fix the mutation or to fix the problem that has taken place over here. And so with those two things in mind, I think these guys are probably going to come under attack one more time. We have an outstanding issue over on this left side. Oh, nice. Cool. Uh, we got our end-of-day report. Uh, so basically what the end of day report does is you get SP. These are promotional points, basically. The more SP you have, the more your enclave government or whatever will unlock new fun things for you to play with, like battle mechs and, you know, like warthogs that just go and wipe everything out. For right now, I'm a level one commander, so I don't have access to that many things. But the missions that you do and the popularity and the security that you maintain inside your territory dictate versus how many casualties you've taken and how many missions you failed, how much XP you're going to get for a period, and they give that on out. You level up, you get new units, it brings you over here and asks you what you want to build. Uh, for the case of the game, everything is conceptualized down into survivors. Uh, so the game assumes that you are a government coming up out of a bunker. You know where all the other bunkers are that you can get basically an infinite amount of Warthogs, an infinite amount of M4s, an infinite amount of 249s, an infinite amount of tanks. Your problem is you don't have enough people trained to man those things. And so instead of this game being like, well, you don't have enough scrap and gunpowder, uh, this game just assumes that since you're backed by an entire national government that is coming back like the flaming, avenging angel of death to take over your territory, that you have all that good stuff. You just don't have people. And so that's where it ties in that you got to win hearts and minds of all these villages that are outstanding over here so that they will send you their sons and daughters to become a part of your faction and wipe out all the zombies and mutants and all the raiders and insurgents and everything else that might exist on the map. Our decontamination team is almost down there, so that's good. As of right now, I've only taken one territory. I had to reload a save. I took this second territory and then like every other territory declared war on me. And so I was dealing with like a gazillion crises all at once 
Uh, let's go ahead and get the drone freed real fast because it says that we are evenly matched right now, and I don't like the sound of that. I don't want to be evenly matched. Yeah, that's a lot of zombies. Okay. Uh, so what we're going to want to do here is we need to be a little bit careful because there are war crimes in this game and you don't want to commit them. Uh, you're trying to convince people that you're the good guy. And so obviously doing things like carpet bombing a neighborhood in order to get rid of zombies are generally frowned upon. Most people don't want you to do that. However, we are going to have to help with this fight with a little air support. So I think what I'd like to do is... I think the, the Vulcan Heavy Explosive Cannon is a good candidate here. I also think that Mercy Missiles might be a pretty good... I gotta... The problem is the zombies are all grouped up right next to the building over here, so that kind of sucks. And the other thing I could do is I could just orbital death laser them all. Let's call in artillery. How about that? We'll call in an artillery strike. It may be a little bit inaccurate. Oh, look at that. You can, like, paint the ground with, like, laser wisps. Uh, this might work really well, or this might kill everybody inside that building right there. We're gonna find out in about five seconds. Uh, so, yeah, get on down, because the Daisy Cutters is coming. Beep. Yep, that's the good stuff right there. I think, I think the artillery strike went okay. We actually narrowly missed the building on that side. So I'm actually fairly okay with how this is turning out for right now. A little bit of frame lag going on from all the particle effects and explosions and everything else. Uh, despite what you're seeing on screen right now, this game is an auto battler. So this fight is going to go the way that it goes regardless of whether or not we intervene. You can give like direct orders, I think. And you can kind of like pull these guys back or something like that, but I haven't quite been able to figure out exactly how to get it to work just yet. Like you can select individual little units and it says there's a direct control panel right here, but I haven't been able to figure out how to get people to move around just yet. The game is very, very, very under tutorialized. I watched a video that the developers put together that showed you how to like do the direct control and everything, but it looked different when they did it in their video. Like when they had stuff collected, or connected and they had clicked on it, it actually showed up inside the direct command menu and whatnot. And so it wasn't really doing that for me. I've just been letting them kind of like auto battle it, battle it out. And I figured I'd figure it out later. Like they seem to fight okay. It's just like every now and again, uh, the vehicles don't really have really good self-preservation. So they don't like try to kite enemies that they have a clear mobility advantage over. They don't try to like encircle enemies that can't quite catch them and are trying to fight them in melee. And that's when it all kind of falls apart and I really need to figure out how the direct control works. But for now, eh. But honestly, I think we've kind of got this one cleaned up. I don't think we have too much to worry about. Oh, those ones are crawling right there. I assume they were walking previously. That one looks like he's got an arm off. Every now and again, a bomb will go off and they'll fly everywhere and it's cool seeing all the glowing confetti fly through the sky. We are winning decisively now. Good. That's exactly what I like to hear. I tend to babysit and watch all the battles because when I don't, I feel like things go wrong. But the game's got a very cool visual style, man. I love what they're doing visually. Sort of almost the helplessness of watching these fights go. This must be something that real commanders in real life go through when they're monitoring situations from like drone altitudes and, you know, satellites and things like that. It must be very frustrating because as I've played the game, I've found myself numerous times being like, dude, just shoot the zombie. He's right there. Kill the, the guy. He's up on top of the building. Shoot the sniper. You can see him right there. Like, it's happened, and so I do think it captures that very, very nicely. The sound effects are also very well chosen, giving you the sound of lumps and pops and bumps, uh, of viewing something from a long ways off. It sounds like gunfire. Uh, it really sincerely does, and so they've did a, they did a good job on that front, too. Now let's pull it up onto the map level, I guess, because it looks like we're winning. Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like we won. Uh, we're going to keep the drone right where it's at because this mission is not done yet. you got to stay until the meter fills up. I'm a little bit worried about these guys to the south. I sent, like, a, a human specimen collection thing over here to capture zombies in this area, but I'm not, like, convinced that I have enough people. Let's go ahead. Do I not have a drone available? Which drones do I have right now? What is this drone looking at? Show me what. what is this drone viewing. 
Uh, this drone appears to be... Oh, I know where this drone is. I recognize this place. Uh, my drone is over here. Settlement that was we will return the drone real fast. Uh, for whatever reason, the game lags sometimes when you call back a drone. I don't know why it does. Uh, but it looks like we're winning over here anyways, so maybe I don't need to monitor the situation. It'll all turn out okay. Thus far, I've, I've liked the game. I, I think there's some definite problems here, though, that I've run into as I've been playing it. The first one is that it's under-tutorialized. This game does not equip you with the proper knowledge that you're going to need by the end of its tutorial to understand everything that's going on. Uh, the other side of it that you're going to run into is that a lot of the vehicles have very similar names, and a lot of missions want very specific vehicles, so you need, like, a decontamination truck to go take care of, like, a radioactive pool that's over here bothering this town, or you need a wildfire APC, which it said for this mission, but there's, like, three different versions of the wildfire APC, so, like, which one should I send? You know what I mean? Uh, I I've run into that a couple times with this game. And then on top of that, there are some performance issues. And I think the biggest problem with this game is just that the UI is all over the place. Uh, this game has a chunky UI, and frequently this UI will have, like, a menu overlaying a menu overlaying a menu, and it'll all pop up at the same time, and it's just, like, information overload. I definitely think there's a lot of room here for them to reorganize the operational UI. This stuff along the bottom is perfectly fine, and the events tab, I think, is all right but like you've got an events tab over here but it like will also list all the events up here so like you've got two things that are kind of displaying the exact same information i guess maybe i don't know it's it's kind of hard to tell either way it looks like we did capture our zombie specimen so that's good and our rewards is that public health went up by eight we got two new civilians that we can now give a job to so we can assign them to be soldiers we can assign them to be pilots we can assign them to do this that or the other and then it looks like it raised our security by about 20 percent however the local population is a little bit cranky about the fact uh, that we're capturing live zombie specimens so that went down by five percent the good news is these guys are headed back home and so we'll let that happen uh, but yeah, the UI in this game is kind of a mystery to me. The ultimate goal of the game is just to make sure that this meter doesn't go down below this threshold because that's when they replace you as commander, basically because you're doing a bad job, like you're relieved of duty. <laughs> duty. Uh, we're going to wait and see if they get attacked again by zombies over here or if they get a freebie and they can just come home. Uh, they got a freebie, so they get to come back home, and that raised our popularity by quite a little grip right there. The downside is, oh no, we had two guys killed in action. What are the details of that? Oh, really? We lost two squads of liquidators. That sucks. Those are going to be difficult to replace. All right. Liquidators are like your basic infantry unit. You can think of them as just like normal army infantry, but they actually cost a lot of money to produce for whatever reason. Well, not a lot of money. It's like to get one squad takes four of your population, whereas I can basically get a battle tank for the same amount of guys. And so the only difference is a battle tank can't infiltrate a bunker or a building, uh, whereas these guys can. And so a lot of missions require you to infiltrate or, like, uproot some insurgents or something that are inside of a bunker. And if you don't have infantry on hand, they won't be able to do it. What's going on over here? So an old underground structure is uncovered. Bunkers, subway tunnels, and buried buildings are scattered throughout the zones. Deploy your teams to search them, perhaps uncovering supplies or mutant hives. I would recommend when you play this game that you save a lot. Like, seriously quick save all the time because sometimes it'll say a mission has like one difficulty and so you'll send like you know three or four squads of guys like 20 men to go check this place out and then you'll hear the cacophonous gunfire of them all dying and being eliminated and then it'll be like mission failed and your performance will drop by like a huge amount uh just save scum it man just save scum it. This game kind of runs on like a, a hair economy where you never quite have enough to do all the things you want to do. And so like, if you lose guys, it doesn't bode well for you. So just re-roll it, man. That's what I've been doing. Normally, I'm not a big save scummy guy, but in the case of this game, I have been just to get the video out. We'll go ahead and we will send a couple of MRAPs and we will send a detachment of 20 infantry. So two MRAPs, 20 infantry to check that point and see if it's okay. And we will also assign a drone to that location so that we can monitor hands-on and make sure that everything's going all right. 
Uh, these villages over here, you can click on your main base and it will allow you to set up patrols. Uh, so for example, we have a patrol right here of surface scouts and whatnot. I don't know where they're at actually. Uh, it looks like they're inside the base. And so you've got a couple of stats that you want to watch out for. Security, popularity, and viral contamination. Uh, when you set up patrols, those units are no longer available for deployment to any hot zone or any conflict. They just roam around the map along the patrol that you gave them, and they will occasionally take damage, and they will occasionally have to come back and resupply. Uh, but what it does is it makes your security go up because they're out there baiting the enemy into attacking you from the hills. And sometimes it can trigger missions to come up where you can actually wipe out enemy bases and things of that nature as well because they uncover them while on patrol. And so patrols have like an important function in this game. It may feel like you're just sacrificing units that are now not doing anything and wandering around the map, but it looks after your security and it helps you find extra events and things on the map, which is pretty cool. Uh, the scroll is too slow with your your mouse wheel in this game you've got to scroll a lot to zoom up and zoom out and whatnot all right so what's going on here we are winning slightly give me a drone feed let me take a look let, let, let me have a look at what we got going on y'all all right so drone feed who are we fighting with bandits oh they actually have guns okay mercy missile right there please Let's see if we can knock out that buggy mercy missile inbound hoof all right, we are now winning decisively. I'm trying to, like, minimize the amount of casualties that I take here because we're penalized for every single life lost while we're playing this game. And so I'd really prefer not to lose anybody, but it looks like some of the liquidators over here are getting chewed on pretty well. How many of you guys are still alive over here? That bandit buggy? Damn. All right, drop a missile on the bandit buggy. See if we can save a unit or two. Oh, I killed a civilian. My bad. I committed a war crime. I didn't mean to. I may have I may have done a very slight war crime. I told him he shouldn't be sitting by the windows while I'm dropping bombs, though. I told him he was going to see nothing but purple dots in his eye line if he did that. Nobody wanted to listen to me. Yeah, so they're going to be a little bit cranky with me. Uh, the game does have really good artwork, although for whatever reason, that one was all stretched out. We got five security right there. It looks like we got 10 more. Ah, it's a net positive, dude. We got 10 more, guys. I'll take that. And we didn't lose anybody? Hell yeah. Uh, call the drone back. And it looks like we are sitting pretty right now. Normally what it says under negatives up there after you kill a civilian is it says committed war crimes. But it looks like the war crimes are not being taken into account. Fair enough. Uh, somebody go ahead and, uh, I'm gonna need you guys to delete that footage for me. Yeah, whoever, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, the drone footage, go ahead and wipe that from the hard drives, okay? I'm gonna need you, yeah, just wipe that out, then I'm gonna need you to pull the hard drive, I'm gonna need you to drill, like, eight or nine holes in it, then you're gonna take that, I want you to, like, roll it on top of a big magnet for a little while, and then I want you to just throw it in the furnace, alright? That's, that's the plan. Can I trust you to do that, LT? Alright, thank you. We also have, like, base buildings and stuff that we can, like, build. I haven't figured out how to make it work yet, though. Like, I don't know if these buildings, we already have them or if we can build them. But, like, when I click on them, like, nothing seems to happen. Like, left click or right click. From watching the developers play the game, like, these are all in gray when they were playing the game. And then they click on them and it deducts, like, their little units and it builds the thing inside the town and you get the production, but we don't have like any production from what I can tell. But it appears as though like all of these are already unlocked or like in there. But like if we tabulate how much food is being produced from like all the grow beds and whatnot, it's kind of clear that I, I don't think we're producing that much food, so I don't know. So it looks like there's a couple different factions and like based on the actions you take, uh, these factions will have different levels of support. So basically it comes down to people that are concerned with technology and restoring the old world, people that are concerned with our food supply, and people that are concerned with the zombie virus. Just things to, to keep in mind there. And so I haven't got to do an election yet. Um, it just brought this window up at one point during the tutorial and said that that's what it does. And then I've just been kind of like chilling here. I, play, I did one playthrough where I tried to expand and conquer the map and like 
everybody attacked me all at once. Like, I got straight dookied on, bro. It was brutal. So be very careful in this game before you expand. It may be... Oh, there it is. Committed war crimes. It just took him a second. LT, uh, come see me in my office. <laughs> uh, there are also enemy leaders. Uh, so the game, basically each of these zones has like guys that are connected to one another. So you've got like the Scarecrow and you've got like Rogan. I've already killed these two guys, Whitman and the Impaler. Uh, I took care of them because that's how I got this territory. Mm -hmm. Let's give it a little time and see what our patrol digs up here. Uh, these are the guys that basically find those little red exclamation points while they wander around the map. And so they tend to like die if, I mean honestly, I feel like a lot of the scout battalions that I send out are not actually scouts. They're like full on battalions. Like a scout to me, like scouts is like eight guys, you know what I mean? Like on a patrol, just kind of like seeing what happens out in the field. This right here is like 30 guys plus support vehicles because when they get hit, they've got to last long enough that you can get reinforcements to them. Uh, that's the tough part. And so if you just put like four or five units inside of here and let them patrol, they tend to get wiped, which means you just lost 20 population, which you can't really replace uh, before you can reinforce them fast enough to save them. And so they tend to die pretty quick when they get jumped by the enemy. I suppose we could start heading in this direction. Let's go ahead and send a drone over there to discover it. We have leveled up, so that's good. Um, I don't know what it unlocked for us. But we've got 33 guys to play around with so that we can make units as crises come up. It looks like maybe we got some, what is that, like a medium, that's like a medium Humvee. Oh, it's an ambulance. Okay. What does it do? It's equipped with advanced armor protection, combat ambulances, reliably transport casualties from the battlefield to medical aid stations. Huh. Does it actually do that? Weird. Like, I've noticed inside the base that I do have, like, medivacs and stuff, too. I've never been able to use one, though. Like, I've been able to use the VTOLs and the gunships and stuff. Like, I know how to use those, but the medivacs have never really been relevant. I assume it's, like, an event that comes up where they're like, Hey, your units are too wounded to make it back to base. Send a, send a medivac to save them, otherwise, you know, you're going to lose your units after that combat. But I hadn't seen it so far yet. All right, so our scouting is done from that drone over on that left-hand side. Zone 2 is the location of primary healthcare stations for survivors. Securing it allows us to improve lifespans and the birth rate of our survivors. The station will also serve as a local vaccination center. Its stockpile of medical equipment and drugs make it a frequent target of bandits. Okay. That definitely sounds like something we probably want to be appraised of. What's this zone over here? Send a drone to scout that one real quick. So zone six is scouted. Southeastern territory. Old maps show a number of bunkers inside the borders that could be used uh, for union activities. Reports suggest there is cyborg activity in the zone. It's probably not great. Oh yeah, we got two new guys down here. Iron Grip and Razor. Cool art style though. I dig it. Sometimes though, like it feels like there's a bug where things are like stretched or something. I don't know. Is that patrol over? All right, patrol's done. Didn't really find anything, unfortunately. Good news is we can just send them back out. Not that big of a deal. Uh, so we'll go ahead and send out some surface scouts. Uh, yeah, send out the surface scouts. Give them like two stacks of liquidators. Give them like an MRAP. And then maybe give them like a Humvee, I guess. Sounds good. Set time. Uh, yeah, they can go at 1900, I guess. We already took a look at that route right there. Let's go ahead and do Route 3 real fast. We'll assign it. Okay, uh, they found something, actually. I don't know exactly what happened here, uh, but they found a contaminated area, so we gotta send decon vehicles over here to get rid of the contaminant. Uh, good job, team. You found it. Uh, we do have decon vehicles ready to go, so we will take these two decon vehicles, and we will send just a light detachment with them to protect them, and then we'll send them on over. Hopefully that doesn't turn into anything too nasty. Uh, what else do we have? Mission started medevac. Some of our uni units have been severely injured and require a immediate medical treatment. Okay, yeah. Go ahead and send out the medevacs then. I'm guessing those two are stacked on the same spot. That's exactly what happened. All right, medevac is on its way out. 
And these guys are going to come in and decontaminate the area. So it sounds like they wandered into a contaminated area and didn't realize it until they started farting blood. Ah, uh, well, uh, this is one of those games that's really hard to recommend, though, because I think the idea that they have here is super novel and super rad. I like the idea of being above the action by a pay grade and having to make hard decisions about, like, what units you dedicate to what cause and where you send them and, like, who do I send over here? Why am I low on manpower? How do I fix this problem? Like, I think that's really cool. I like that a lot. But on the other side, I think the tutorialization, I think the UI design, I think all that stuff is very messy. And on top of that, you've got like AI voices in here reading out things that repeat. Like I really like the little combat sequences, but with the over map section, it always felt like right as I was getting into things, there was something weird, you know what I mean? Like I would watch a tutorial that the developers made a video of, and then when I would look at mine, it would look different, or like everything would be unlocked, like all of our base options, but like we're still losing food and losing water, even though supposedly we have everything unlocked, so I'm guessing it might not be working the way that it's supposed to. My advice for right now is that this is a good idea that's in very, very rough shape. Uh, so I would put it on a wish list if this seems like the kind of thing that's intriguing to you, and I would keep an eye on it, and I would wait for, like, other people to fall on that grenade and be sort of like their alpha testers. Because there was enough things that were weird about this that didn't match up between my play experience and the tutorial videos that the developers put up on the Steam forums that I was just kind of like, eh, is it bugged, or did they change something, or what? It left me feeling confused a lot of the time, and so until they get all the UI stuff sorted out so that you don't have, like, overlapping menus on top of each other, until they get all the translation stuff sorted out, and the spelling and grammar stuff sorted out, and the voice acting stuff sorted out, uh, I don't think the combat and the overworld sort of allocation carries all the other little sort of notches, unfortunately, that are in this one. So I would keep an eye on it because it's a cool idea, and if they get it polished up, like, absolutely, I would definitely recommend it. But as of right now, that polish does not exist, and I spent a lot of time banging my head against this game today. And so anyways, I'm gonna wait and see with it. I like the idea, but it's not quite at the polish level that I would like yet. Once it gets there, I'd be willing to give it a go. The other thing I'd be forewarned about is the developers have another game that looks an awful lot like this one that they made like three or four years ago. And then if you go to the reviews, they're all saying that the game has been abandoned. And so that's the other part that had me like a little bit concerned is just like, uh, did they just like take the assets from the previous game and like throw them into this one and just like start over? You know what I mean? And then just like leave the other, I don't know. And so since all of those things are kind of unanswered as it stands right now, this is a wait and see from me. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out White Sands. Tomorrow we'll be checking out something else. Cool little idea. I hope they get it polished up. But for right now, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I'll see you all later. Thanks for being here and uh, take care, folks.